Hello and welcome to episode 40 of the Dog News Show. I'm Julie here. And I'm Debbie Connolly. Hello. Hi. It's been a funny couple of days, hasn't it? It's weird. <laughs> it is weird. Um, this is the first one that we filmed, so it's a bit strange because we've had to brush our hair and put makeup on. <laughs> Yeah, a bit of lippy, bit of mascara. Well, normally, I'm in my jammies. <laughs> yeah, snap, yeah. Snap. yeah. <laughs> I don't always even brush my teeth, I have to say. Oh. I know. I can know tell that. at the other end of Skype. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's, we hope you enjoy it, and we can only do our best, really, can't it's we? It's a lot more plate spinning, so. Yeah, but me and Gary are fine. <laughs> I brought Gary to help. Yeah, you get the special Gary, though. Look at that, and I'm, I'm demoted. Yeah, but it's got Gary. my name on. Debbie yeah. Norms, Gary Barno. I shall bring them up next time. It, the back of it says sad old lady, I think. <laughs> <laughs> shall we talk about some dog Yes, I think, I think we should. I think we should. Um, I want to start with um, a heroic dog story. Oh, jolly good. Yeah, heroic dogs. Um, this is actually a story from the New Zealand Herald. Um, and I, I quite like this story because the, the headline is Heroic Dog Bites Owner's Attacker. Ooh. Can't ask more than that, really, can you? Yeah. Um, a dog came to the rescue of its owner, biting an armed man who was attacking her. I said that in a very dramatic yes. voice. Dun, dun, an dun, armed dun. man, <laughs> yeah. If you could do that, that helps. Um, 19-year-old woman was in a Christchurch park with her dog just before 2 a.m. when she was attacked. The woman fought back and so did her dog. Go on, dog. Um, the police said that he uh, actually, the guy jumped her and he actually did have a weapon on him. But she scratched her attacker, so good for her, oh. and her dog bit the man in the shoulder or neck. I'm not sure why they're saying, oh, I think, because he actually he got away, I think, yeah. temporarily. Um, and, and in another unrelated incident, a 14-year-old girl was attacked and pulled to bushes in the central city. Um, this is a, a new story, and I want to follow this up a little bit, because I believe that they don't have a version of the um, Dangerous Dogs Act over there. Because in this country, we probably have the attacker then suing the dog owner for being attacked by her dog. Mm. Um, one of the points I want to make about this is we all, we all would like to think that our dog might actually attack somebody who was hurting us. Um, but in real life, there's versions of stories like this where there isn't actually any attack. The dog runs away, mm. cries, hides, or the owner has to defend the dog from the attacker. Um, it'd be interesting to see how this develops because they don't seem to have um, a dangerous dog act like we do here. So uh, at the moment it's quite new. I'm glad the dog fought back. Um, yeah. There's another version of this which I'll try and find as well because uh, it appears to be a, a big-ish dog, a crossbreed yeah. of some sort. <laughs> Not that that <laughs> is relevant because a terrier could just, <laughs> just bite just their <laughs> clothes because um, I know your attitude to that. So um, it, it's an interesting story because um, at the moment it's quite new, but, but I'm, I'm always fascinated by the idea of what happens next. Mm. Uh, the police are investigating this particular incident and the person did actually run away after the attack and the police are checking hospitals to see if anybody's turned up with an injury they, to the... Are they taking the dog with them yet? Can we just see if this fits your... No, you're no, no right they're now. doing a line-up. They're doing a line-up and the dog comes in and says, that's the one. It walks like... Yeah. <laughs> no, don't do it like that. Do they not? No, oh, they do it. They protect the dog in the darkened room. Do you not watch NCIS? Yeah. And That's you'll get my card. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yesterday. So it, it, it's, it's new. It's an interesting story. But um, the there aren't any stupid comments on this one, mm. as there tend to be, in the British versions. Yes, and it's always, it's polarised, the dog should be put down, yes. the dog should be given a yes. medal, or, you know, yeah. which he should, I'm on the medal side. Oh, well, absolutely. It's, it's interesting though, because in that situation, I think the dog very much tunes into your feelings and, and reactions, and goodness knows what smells and, and pheromones, whatever we're giving off in that. I'm beginning off some smell oh, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, I'm, I'm not, even, not even going there. <laughs> I was, I mean, my, my black Labrador buddy is the softest, lovely, I mean, you've met him, you just, everybody is his friend. Mm. And I was walking down an alleyway once, and I had to go through it because I was going to be late to pick Jenny up from school. So I was going through this alleyway, and there were two lads sitting down in it, and they were bigger than me, taller than me. And they, st I'd have been all right if they'd sat still, but they stood up, walked to the end, and they were looking up and down the road. And I'm thinking, they're checking if anybody's there. I'm going to get mugged here. And I thought, I can't, I can't go the wrong, long way around, I'll be late for school. So I, and I just do said, you watch too much television? I think I do. Right. But I was frightened, I was really, And I just said to Buddy, sit down, get him. 
And he kind of looked at me and looked at these lads. And he doesn't, he, he's not, he doesn't know what getting means, but it's the tone of voice, because mm. I was genuinely frightened. And you know how he's all wagged the tail? He just walked through, he didn't growl or anything, but he didn't give any sign of being friendly. And he was clearly kind of, oh, I don't know what's going on. And we just walked through, and they didn't touch he's me. He's terrified. <laughs> I I went, oh my God, she can't even defend me. I won't even look at them. I'll just carry on. <laughs> it worked, and I, I honestly believe. And I you're here been, to tell the tale. I lived. I survived. Because you might mm. have been wondering there, so to clear up any mystery, I did survive. Oh, and so did Buddy. Yes. To fight Buddy. another day. <laughs> to fight another day. Or to love another day. Uh, we all. we do have a problem with this in this country because of how the law works here, and and mm. I, and I this one's quite positive, and mm. it has been investigated, and I hope they find the person. But I do like the idea of a lineup. I think every perpetrator of a crime, a, a dog of some kind, should jump out and get them. And obviously, we could fit the size of dog or, or the, the, the thoroughness of the bite into the crime. You don't like So, that, do little people get little dogs to bite No, 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 no. If he just nicked an apple, little... Because you you're ordering a non-PC here. Am I? Yeah. Am I? I'm a, I'm well, like little person. people need little dogs. No, 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 no. Need no little dogs. crimes. Little crimes need little dogs. Big crimes need big dogs. Maybe two dogs. I don't know. It's it's a system that's new, Debbie. I haven't thought it all through yet. <laughs> clearly, clearly. <laughs> I haven't got it clearly all Clearly not. Clear. You heard it here first, guys. <laughs> the new law. Yeah. I'll be I'll be presenting this to David Cameron within days. I would think because once he hears this. He'll well, yeah. Well, yes. Once he hears this, he'll cry probably. <laughs> um, thank you, David Cameron. I would story. move on, Judy. <laughs> Tell me what We're your on. story is, Judy. Right. Well, we're always hearing warnings about breeders. And how we need to be careful about breeders. But there's a story here, there's a lot wrong with it, that you're going to be, you're, you'll be on your high horse and tutting oh, and shaking. That doesn't sound like me. But this lady had sort of buyers that she needs to be aware of, customers she needed to be beware of. Be beware of? Anyway, whatever. Um, Dory, Doreen Dawson, who's 82, in Warsaw, and she had two. Where's eight, Warsaw? I'm not exactly, now it's from the website chad.co.uk, which I thought was Africa. It doesn't sound like an African story though. Doreen Dawson does not live in Africa. So I'm thinking north, further up than London, definitely. It's not central like London, it's okay. further up. Let's, let's move on from your bad geography okay. for a moment. <laughs> to my bad judgment. Yeah, I know I said geography. Yes, yes. Well, anyway. Two ladies turned up at Dorian Dawson's house and she got two eight-week-old black Pekingese puppies for sale. Now, one of the ladies sat in the car and said, oh, I can't walk, could you bring the puppies out? So she took the two puppies out and then she said they made all the right noises, they asked all the right questions, you know. Um, then they said, can we see the puppies' paperwork? So she went back inside. Leaving the puppies in the car. Came back. Let me guess. They weren't there when she came out. You got it. Oh. You, you're psychic. You She's are. an idiot. The worst bit, I'm going to read this. So oh, that, the worse than that? Oh, the worst bit. Doreen says, I've only got my pension, so if I need to buy anything, I breed the dogs. <gasps> Serves right. Told huh? you. Told you. Serves right. People do have, and obviously it works for her, except she's fallen in the car. She doesn't, I mean, I don't know the lady, but that doesn't sound like the the most scrupulous or, or best intentioned breed. You shouldn't breed for money. No. You shouldn't go out to cars and hand all the puppies to people who claim they can't get out the car. That's, that is stunning, isn't it, that I need a bit of money, I'm going to breed the dogs. It's just... But I'm more bothered by the handing over to people in a car. How stupid is this woman exactly? <laughs> I mean, seriously, how stupid is this woman? It is. It is. I mean, it, it, it's breathtaking, really. Has she bothered to tell the police? Well, I'm assuming that Warsaw has yeah. any police, whatever it is. Yes, and there's a Crime Stoppers number, 0800... Uh, well, then it must be a five, British five, crime, then, wasn't one. it? Well, yes, it's obviously it's not in China. It's not in Africa. Which I did know was in Africa. Uh, yeah, yeah, well done. Which isn't in Atlas, is it? It's a shame you don't know where London is, but anyway... It's yeah. central, it's central. Yes. They wouldn't have put it somewhere right out of the way, would they? they it's, people want to go there, they'd be through. Yeah. Just yeah. quite a bit of common sense. Yeah. So that just horrified me and, and there is this perception amongst some people that if you breed dogs you get a lot of money from it. The people that do it, you know, with all their heart and soul. The and people the who, who do it properly aren't don't. making money at no. it because they're not they're no. not breeding enough puppies for a start. But I've read uh, articles, I've talked to people who've said, Well I paid eight hundred pounds, a thousand pounds for my puppy and I need I need that money back. 
So they breed the litter to make their money back? No. No. No, people. No, don't do that. Don't do that. You're investing in the thought and commitment and veterinary care and feeding and socialising. You're you're trying forever to strive to breed the perfect one and it's never going to happen. So... As a good breeder, you're putting the right genetics together, you're doing the right health tests, the right paperwork, you're checking up people. Mm. You don't go to cars and hand over puppies no. to people in cars who claim they can't get out of them. Mm. So it serves it, all right, silly woman. Initially, you like sleeping with them, looking after them all the time. You, it's, it really yeah, is Yeah, yeah, good, good breeders do, especially for yeah. breeding giant breeds. You've got to be very careful yeah. mum doesn't kill them. Yeah, and so... Serves well, it right. I thought there was just so much... They're obviously baddies that took the puppies, but I wasn't very impressed with the breeder there. No. So Don't buy puppies from people breeding for money no. either. No, no. So there you go. Not a happy story. No, I'm depressed now. I'm oh, sorry. No. Oh, I'm so sorry that I brought you the story that... Yeah, well, my life will never be the you same. got anything to cheer us up? No. I'm, <laughs> I'm getting worse. Usually. I'm getting worse now, much worse. Right, sticking with the breeder theme. Say oh, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. There. Oh, I like that too. Um, I am your feminist, kind of. Um, I am going with, um, this is a, a story that made headlines in the national press. Um, I'm going to read you the Daily Mail's version of the headline. <laughs> this will be good. Um, because the Daily Mail obsessed, it seems to be obsessed with calling everybody cruft breeder. Um, you can't be a cruft breeder, but anyway, never mind. Um, the headline was a bit of a, an eye-catching headline anyway. Um, Top Cruft breeders show dogs savage three young girls as they walked home from school with their mothers. Now, when I first read this, I mean, the Bull Mastiff is a great breed, and it is indeed a Bull Mastiff breeder who's involved in this, and a couple of Bull Mastiffs. Um, the initial story, when you read it, um, is, and you read the first bit of it, you think, oh my God, this is terrible, a dog that big, big breed. Um, I'm going to read a couple of bits, because the thing that is missing from every news report I read on this is that there's a big backstory to this that is really, really important and it affects every single one of us as a dog owner in this country. Hmm. So I'm going to read the first bit from the Daily Mail. A top breeder who show dog savaged three young girls was given a suspended jail sentence today. The girls, aged five to seven, were attacked by two bull mastiffs as they walked home from school with their mothers. Um, They were shaken like dolls and bitten all over their bodies, a court heard. All needed hospital treatment for their wounds and two required surgery. The dogs are owned by Julie Lindley, who's 53. Why the newspapers do that? I know, because it makes all the difference in the world that we know how old these people were. Um, She admitted that the dogs who had escaped from her garden were dangerously out of control. She destroyed both dogs after the attack um, and still went to court because they had been in the fence under the Dangerous Dogs Act. One of these two dogs was a two-year-old dog called Theo, and he'd just been named the top UK bull mastiff and had come third in a class at Crufts. He can't have just done that because it was last year. Um, Daily Mail. Um, he escaped from his pen along with another dog on March 22nd last year. This is... When you read this story, and we, I mean, we, we cover a lot of this on the show, when you read this story, you think how irresponsible, two big <coughs> dogs... <coughs> two big dogs got out um how terrible that this is um and i'm the first one pointing the finger at people now i must admit when i first read it the way that it's reported it comes across a little bit like somehow this breed is to blame um i want to give thanks to uh, deed not breed um because they did send me some information uh and i'm going to read statements from the solicitor and from judy lindley herself in a moment um i think what's important here to understand is the lengths that this breeder had actually gone to when you read this report in the news you're reading something that makes it look like she was irresponsible she owned these enormous dogs and they were running wild around where she lives and that's far from the truth now i want to thank deed not breed because they posted some information and gave me permission to use it and it is on the facebook page um, and i think we should link to it from the facebook uh, dog news show page as well um i think what's important here is the history of this is not what people think it is Now, if you don't understand um, dog shows, um, I think it's very, very important to understand that that a dog, this dog has actually been campaigned, which means he's been in shows all over the world. He's been out of the country. He was even handled by a nine-year-old child um, in a show. Now, dogs that go out of the country, you're talking about a dog that has the stress of travelling, is in a strange place. Mm -hmm. These dogs have to be reasonably bomb proof to show at the level and as successfully as this particular dog has so 
We're not talking about a dog that uh, you know lives in a kennel in the garden and it never goes anywhere. Um, and I, I want to. There's quite a long statement from Julian Lindy, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I am going to put it on my blog so that we can link from the show to it because I think it is very very important. The reporting of this makes it look like an irresponsible, greedy breeder who hasn't taken responsibility for keeping a dog safe, and it's far from the truth. Um, I'm going to read the first bit because this was never mentioned in any news report I've seen. This is from Judy Lindley and thank you Judy for sending this. On the 22nd of March 2012, a fence panel at my home address was removed by persons unknown which released two of my dogs from their fenced and gated toileting area at the side of my property and resulted in them attacking and injuring three children who were walking home after leaving a local school with their parents. The dogs had been placed in the enclosure for only about 10 minutes. The fence was in place when they were taken out by myself, so I was horrified when my daughter came through the front door with one of the dogs, saying that she arrived home to find the dog on the doorstep. I immediately ran out of the side enclosure to discover another one of my dogs, a young puppy, cowering and urinating. The fence panel removed and lying on the adjoining footpath, and my male dog, Theo, missing. I ran down the public footpath to look for Theo, fearing he'd been stolen, but was met by a police officer who informed me that Theo had run down the main road and whilst there had bitten three young children. I was truly horrified by what had apparently happened and shocked as there had never been any, any indication of aggressive behaviour from either dog. Um, so now you see a different, completely yeah. different angle on this. Um, there's a bit more. Well, I won't read every word of this because it's quite long, but there's, there's some very, very, um, very interesting points that she makes in a minute. Um, Julie wants to make it absolutely clear that her total sympathies are entirely with the children um, and she's not trying to um, say anything about the families or the children themselves she's horrified that this has happened she immediately she took both the dogs and put them to sleep yeah she is she is um, she took both dogs and put them to sleep immediately she didn't she didn't argue now Whilst money and, and dog breeding isn't the point, mm. potentially there are greedy people who might have tried to sit this out mm. um, and not put the dog down because it, on paper this dog's it's worth an awful lot of money. Yeah. 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 Um, and that's not the case. There was no question. She took both the dogs that had escaped immediately and put them to sleep. And it is a terribly, terribly sad story. Um, I want just to read a couple of very important comments as well. I'm a responsible dog owner. My dogs are always exercised on a lead and were well socialised and taken to puppy classes and ring craft classes and were shown in both the UK and in Europe. As such, they were used to being extensively handled and being in crowded places and petted and closely examined by strangers and children. Theo had previously been shown by a junior handler aged 11. You know, this, this is a, a dog that walks through a dog show with dogs either side oh, people all over it's, you know I mean? yeah, it's mad yeah. at dog shows yeah. people are waving leads about shouting at each other oh, and there's dog food and treats hard, everywhere it's, it's mad so there's never ever been any hint she's i believe has owned um has lived where she is for 10 years and never ever had a problem um it's assumed that the panel was removed in order for someone to steal one of my dogs or the puppy that was actually with oh. them um, and I've agonised over why they behaved the way that they did and have discussed this with behaviourists who feel that this was not necessarily down to my dog's general temperament, but more likely to be due to the circumstances surrounding them being released and becoming unsupervised when they were always used to being under my instructions. I was going to say, do you think they were hurt when they were there? It's hard to say. I mean, the from what I understand, this fence panel, um, the only way they could have got it out and, and could have got it out was to lift the whole panel because the, the panel is unmarked apart from there's, there's like a mark on one corner which would happen if you tossed it aside now if two bull mastiffs had gone through a fence panel it would be a lot more damaged yeah. than it actually is so it does seem to fit the theory that somebody did this on purpose because she's got nothing to gain by doing this she she she's gone 10 years without an incident at, uh, i believe at the same address so this is a really important story um there's a couple of things that we all need to think about as dog owners I had done everything in my power to ensure my garden was secure to prevent my dogs getting out, but I had never thought that I would be held responsible if they were released by someone else trying to get in. I have now become so concerned about someone breaking in that I have erected a metal kennel um, enclosure within the original one that is lockable to prevent someone attempting to enter in the future, but it's not something I would have ever thought necessary within my own garden. Um, she then goes on to make some comments about these little girls and how terrible and will be effective for the long time to come, and she says that she can't apologise enough for that. Um, 
I think this is the, the thing that's important about this is that Julie had to plead guilty under the Dangerous Dogs Act. And the most frightening aspect of this story is you have to plead guilty even if, because you're still the offender, even if somebody else lets your dogs out. And there was, there was an awful lot of surprise um, from an awful lot of people when this, when this part of the story actually got out because there is no defence. There is no defence to this. So you can't say, well, people took my fence panel down and actually let my dogs out. You can't do that. It doesn't make the slightest bit of difference. So although she was responsible and is absolutely devastated, what she did was she did the responsible thing and put these two dogs down. And, and she's in absolute state at the moment right. over this. I want just briefly to read the um, solicitor statement um, because this is the these this is a story that that could be anybody mm -hmm. you know she's got secure fencing well trained dogs well socialized Within dogs and they get out and hurt some children mm -hmm. i mean i did make a comment to uh, one of the dig not breed people that you do wonder whether if it had been a couple of labradors or if it had been a couple of spaniels whether the consequences would have been the same i'm just wondering whether if if the public are walking about and two bull mastiffs come running whether there's an awful lot of screaming hysteria and shouting and chasing that there wouldn't be if it was a Labrador or a Spaniel. I'm not blaming the children, I'm not saying no, that, and of course our sympathies always go to the injured absolutely. in these cases. But you do have to wonder what was it that caused that? whether there was a, a, such a reaction um, from these two big dogs running loose that that was the stressor that caused the problem. I want to read this. This is um, a thank you to Emma Goodall, who's the solicitor who represented uh, Julie. Um, she's a solicitor at Elliot Mather. Um, Julie Lindley was prosecuted under Section 3 of the Dangerous Dogs Act 1991. The offence is one of strict liability, which means that to be guilty of the offence, you simply need to be the owner of a dog which is dangerously out of control in a public place. The fact that in cases such as Mrs Lindley's, where a third party has interfered, does not afford Mrs Lindley a defence, and she was left with no option in law but to plead guilty. And there's a comment that Emma, Emma has made a bit further in this, Equally, if a dog was in a secured vehicle and a third party facilitated the dog's escape without the knowledge of the owner and a bite occurred, again, the dog owner would be liable for prosecution. These scenarios are examples which could occur in everyday life, irrespective of breed or owner. So the, the points that these people want to make are that it could be any one of us. This isn't yeah. somebody with no fencing and untrained dogs. These are dogs who've travelled all over the world a huge dog on a lead with children it hardly knows being handled in a ring with in a place it's never been to before. So this is a responsible dog owner who's done everything possible. Training, fencing, security, and still she got caught out and her two dogs are dead. And the law isn't about pit bulls. People do get a bit obsessed oh, with, I haven't got a pit bull, I'm fine. It's nothing to do with pit bulls. And as you can see from this, there's no defence. There is no defence. So if somebody lets your dog out of your garden, if somebody lets it out of your car, if somebody tries to break in and your dog gets into a public place and hurts somebody, your dog will be dead and you'll be prosecuted. Mm -hmm. Terribly, terribly sad. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, on this occasion they did bite, didn't they? Yes. But, I mean, even, I mean, I'm thinking I've got a really bouncy Labrador. If he got out, if he was let out by somebody and just jumped up and knocked a child mm -hmm. over, that's... The same thing. Uh, yeah. Exactly So you, it really is something that we yes. should all be... We should all worry mm -hmm. and... and I know that Deed Not Breed do, um, do talk to a long lot of people and they do a wonderful job of supporting people in this situation. Mm -hmm. But we would all, as professionals in the industry, like to see this law gone. To not be able to defend yourself and your dogs in these circumstances. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants their kids hurt. Nobody's belittling what happened to these children. But to not be able to defend yourself, mm -hmm. and that could be any one of us as dog owners, <coughs> that somebody does something, mm -hmm. something criminal, and lets our dogs out and they cause a problem and we lose our dogs and we get prosecuted and there's nothing you can do about no. it no. and it's come as a great shock reading some of the comments on the newspaper and on facebook it's come as a great shock to some people oh. that there's no defense that you can't go to court and say well it wasn't my fault they were out a burglar did it doesn't yeah. matter That's so learn a lesson people oh. but i mean how do we get around that because you, you can't be responsible for what other people do. So if you've done your best... No, exactly. You can't get around it. That's the, that's the whole yeah, problem. Yeah. So she's been prosecuted. Um, they were quite keen to try and get this case to court because they wanted to be able to 
educate the public. Yeah, and I have to say, Gillian Lindley yeah. herself is, is very keen that people understand this mm-hmm. story for what it is and get, gets this backstory out because she, she wants everybody to know what the risks are. Every other dog owner she's now thinking of because it could be any of us. She pleaded guilty yeah. under the DDA. Is she still able to keep her, her puppy? It doesn't it affect No, that? it doesn't affect anything else. No, it's no. just those. Yeah, things. that was one offence in one place on one day. It's it's not a cruelty issue. No. Um, it's it's not a question of her. Um, it's not even to a point. It's not even a question on her credibility as a dog owner. She no, can't no. run anymore. No. How much more do you do? There's a cure fencing. Train your dog. Socialise them. <laughs> Socialise a bull mastiff to the point a kid can put it on a lead and walk it around a ring it's never been in before. What more could somebody do? But people have to start to take this seriously. You know, places like Did Not Breed, lots of other organisations. We spend our lives educating people and we're also trying to get people to contact their MPs and change this law Mm -hmm. because that could be anybody. Yeah, yeah. Well, perhaps we can put some links on the website for people to... Yeah, we will. We'll we'll link to um, Deed Not Breed because thank you to them for for getting these to me. Um, Thank you to Emma Goodall and Julie Lindley for these statements and they will be available on the blog as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So now I've depressed us further. Yes. Off you go, (laughs) Jane. Well, I, I know you like it when I bring research to the table, don't you? It lights your life, your life up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I found some research that you're not going to like. Even more than just the research I usually bring. Oh, worse the research. The contents of the re- worse yeah, research. Go on then. Well, there's been a study into golden retrievers. Right. And it was by, I've underlined his name, I will find it, Benjamin Hart, a distinguished professor at... Uh, um, anyway, he's not going to read that bit. He's at UC Davis School of Veterinary Medicine. And he um, led a study into 759, it's obviously a funny number, 759 golden retrievers. Now, they were looking at um, whether they'd been neutered before 12 months old or after 12 months old. And they were looking at um, three can- um Joint disorder, two joint disorders and three cancers. So they're looking at hip dysplasia, cranial cruciate ligament tear, mm. lymphosarcoma, hemangio... I wish I hadn't started this list. <laughs> hemangiosarcoma. He's near pop star in Spain. Hemangiosarcoma! Yeah, racism again. Anyway, Get on with it. it. What was Portugal, the last one? Portugal, Portugal, whatever. And mast cell tumour. It's not, right. it's not less racist if you say Portugal. <laughs> For spreading the racism doesn't lessen the racism. <laughs> Okay, carry okay, on. Okay, moving swiftly along. <laughs> yeah, it's very swiftly. I'll always Spain and Portugal, I've got nothing against them. Anyway, so, they looked at whether... They were not digging the racist tool, <laughs> yes. Before 12 months, or after 12 months, and they actually found that the occurrence of those diseases um, was significantly higher in both males and females who'd been um, neutered, whenever they'd been neutered. It didn't make any difference. Um, now, some of this is... How big was the control group for this? Uh, well, there were 759... They, well, they, I heard 759. Experience. I get that. That wasn't my question, was it? Well, what kind of control group? I mean, how do you have a control group? They're looking at the numbers of, of dogs. They're not sort of doing anything to them. Yeah, but, but, but how, many, how many not neutered dogs, then? Let me do it in simple terms. Yeah. How many not neutered dogs well, it, did they compare it against? No, some of those dogs weren't neutered. How many? I, I don't I don't have those figures. Well then I'm not interested in this research then. <laughs> As but, usual. Half a job, yes. But now somewhere I'm written right. It's not on its own. No, no it, it, I think I find this quite interesting because uh, Dr. George Moore I would if I knew how many entire dogs there were in the study. Well, there's seven hundred and fifty nine dogs. Yeah, stop your... saying that over and over again. That doesn't help me. <laughs> we don't know in that one. No, okay. I've got that one. But I think I, it's something. It's an area I would like to see more research into because I, it, it's something we, that's routine. Can we go and find seven hundred and fifty-nine dogs? You do that. Go on. I bet you could. I bet yeah. you could actually. <laughs> you just go out there, blow a, blow a whistle, and they follow you back. In, I think. Do they? No. No. Okay. Dog whistle, maybe. Um, Doctor George Moore in what, America. What other sort of whistles would I be blowing exactly? <laughs> Purdue University and Banfield Pet Hospital, they looked at the medical records of 1.2 million dogs. So that's a huge 
sample size. Right. And again, they found, now I don't have the breakdown of how many dogs were neutered and how many dogs weren't, but they found that neuter dogs, um, the females were 38% more likely to have an adverse reaction to vaccination, and the males were 27% more likely to have an adverse reaction to vaccinations. But there was a 2009 study with rotties. Now they took um, 119 rotties that lived to 13 or older, okay? And they compared those with 186 rotties that lived to nine years. They did this just from the medical records? I would well, assume so. They'd have to, yeah. yeah. But they found that, you know, that there's a bias that females live longer than males. Where was that in, bias then? Well, it, it, did you imagine it? <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> it's a given. Well, women live longer than men generally. It's a just statistical thing. Well, not dogs. Anyway, carry anyway, on. Anyway, doesn't it? Anyway. Um, rotties, spade younger than four, lost that advantage of living older than, um, uh, longer than the men's. But the ones that, now this is fascinating to me, the Rottweilers who kept their, the female Rottweilers obviously, who kept their ovaries mm. until they were at least six, mm. were five times more likely to live 30% longer than the average. So you're getting, whatever time you would have had with that dog, mm. had it kept its ovaries to six years old, you would have got a third again. Now that to me, is significant. We can have long it is, it's significant. It is extremely significant, but there are so many other factors that come to play in this. Mm. I do worry about studies that have taken one thing like neutering. You know, where did they find the control group? What kind of diet? What kind of nutrition? What kind mm. of long term mm. veterinary care? Were they always vaccinated? Were they not? I do think it's very dangerous for research like this to say we looked at one factor. And these are the consequences mm. because it's it's a much much bigger issue than that, isn't it? Because you're looking at the overall health, the the long term care mm. of the dog, mm. the nutrition that it's had, everything. Another complicating factor that makes it so difficult to find is that different breeds are affected differently by the neutering, the spaying, and have different risks of different. Well, yeah, but potentially, potentially, so, yes, that that is true, and I, I think it's, it's a good idea if they're going to research to pick a breed mm, because mm. Of the genetics involved. But I do worry about these things. You know, it, it's a bit like saying, um, if dogs have their nails clipped six times a month and, and instead of once a year, mm. that they might live a bit longer. Do you see what I mean? There's mm. so many other factors in this. And I'd like to see more research well, yeah. on it. I would. Proper I research. To, to, to where we know how many entire dogs there are in the study. That would help me. I'm assuming they would have known. They just haven't put it in the article. Well, they I'll, should be I'll sitting there, there then, and not you. <laughs> Email, like, my friend Debbie says, "Yeah, that's what I've got to work with." But <clears throat> it, it is somewhat something that I would like to see a lot more research into because if it is something I'd that we're like seeing more research into, into it. Dogs, yeah, yeah um, we need to know how we're affecting them and what are we doing mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. um, so that was uh, that was my uh, my research. Oh, well, it wasn't your like research, it. was it? You didn't do it. You just no, found it, it on the right. internet. That was my research story. Oh, okay. So okay. Yes, I'd like to. Uh, I'd like to know more about that. What she what, something that did actually catch my attention. She's put in Europe, uh, neutering is generally avoided by owners and trainers, not promoted by animal health authorities. Well, not in the UK. Well, where where has she got that from? Look, I don't know. She, she just makes these things up and writes them, <laughs> and then you read them. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I'm taking issue with it and saying that's not the case. Oh, okay. In the UK, okay. no, I didn't take issue with it. Yeah, good. I thought, no, I don't believe that. Okay. Certainly not here. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I'm a very mainland Europe, which I love. What, apart from Portugal and Spain? I like Portugal and Spain. You, you brought up the not liking them. No, I, I mean, think, I, no, I think, I think, I think that was you. I'd like to hear your next story, Debbie, please. Okay. I have props. Oh. I have props. Okay. You need a drum roll? No, no. If it was anybody else, I'd say yes. I'd assume no, because no. there'll be some kind of research into drum rolls <laughs> next. <laughs> right, I'm leaning to get my. I prefer prop. A cheese and onion roll. My prop. Okay. Um, my next story is a kind of product review, uh -huh. um, and and I have to thank uh, Pooch Pack for this. There'll be a link to their website. Um, Pooch Pack is a monthly subscription service. It's. Um, run by a lovely lady called Taisha, who kindly sent this to us, so thank you for that. Um, you can buy 
a monthly box just like this for your pet, right? Or well, your dog. Um, I wouldn't buy it for your cat, although possibly. Um, so Pooch Pack is a, a new business idea uh, by this lady, and you pay, there's a couple of different levels of this, but you pay around £16 a month to be able to um, actually get this box. And it's a bit like Lucky Bag for dogs, hmm. right? So I want to show you what it looks like. Imagine oh, you've just got this. this. Okay. But it's just been there and the dog hasn't bitten him. Well. Yep, no, yeah, yeah, apart from just hanging on the clothes. Um, you have to you have to listen to the last show to understand why I just biting point, sleeves honestly, is fine. She didn't. I didn't. Um, so pooch pack. Um, it comes with this little card inside that explains each of the items. So what you're buying is a box of goodies for your dog every month. Now you haven't seen this box yet. I haven't. Um, it's a complete mystery to me. It's a complete mystery. Mine have already had theirs and eaten various things. So I want you to look at it and react as if you've paid your money and this has turned up at your okay. house. Now you know when you say to me react, I go... No, not overreact. I've told oh, you before. Oh, no, sorry, just react. Sorry. Just react, okay? Yes. okay? Right. So, Pooch Pack. Here I'm it is. Here is Pooch Pack. As a dog owner. Here is Pooch Pack. <gasps> Bye, Postman. Thanks. No, this is Postman. Oh, <laughs> you different, right, so you open okay. your Pooch Pack box Ooh. and let's see what it looks Ooh, like. the cats would like that. That bit the cats would like. Take that in. So we've got papaya. Ooh, a hundred percent fruit and veg. Dog chews. Ooh. Mm. Mm. Now that's. I'd like to see what, how, what, how I've reacted to that because ours have different. Um, we have a Labrador <coughs> Bichon and a, a Border Collie, and the Bichon likes pear and banana. They'll all eat apple, but she'll eat. Um, yeah, pear and banana. The other two won't. So it's very. Uh, I'd like to see what she does. Sweet potato, 100% fruit and veg dog chews. Mm, and the, actually, the ingredients, it just says 100% sweet potato. That's, that's, no, I think that's yeah, the point of being 100%, what, yeah. really. I'm just checking. 792. No, <laughs> but... Is it. <laughs> ooh, ooh, I'm liking this. I'm liking mm. this. Rockstone, wibble wobble. <laughs> Toy, Oh. We'll s oh, they'd like that. Smell it. Mmm. Oh, yes, vanilla. Scent. It's vanilla. And it floats. And there's a treat chamber. Oh, yeah. Okay. You haven't finished yet. Like there's that. more things. There's more. Yeah, there's, there's more. more. There's more. Oh, what's... <laughs> what's this one? Okay. Oh. Oh. Oh, now that is useful. Yeah. I really like that look. So it's a... Keychain, keyfold, but you take with you. Yeah, baby bags. Have, and then you hang them on the poop tree. No, you don't. Oh no, you don't hang them on the you poop don't. tree. No, don't hang them on the poop tree. Don't no. hang them on the poop tree. Where do I hang mine? You saw them yesterday. On my gate. No, I don't. <laughs> oh no, I'm sorry. No. On my gate or on the back of your car. On the back. I've not put one on your gate. No, oh. you throw it over the gate without my permission. That was my husband. Without permission, no. I never ever told him to do that. Just excuse me. That was my husband, and it was with permission. <laughs> that's slander or libel, I can't remember which, but it's one. <laughs> it's one so thing. that, that, oh, that's my, my top thing. Maybe I'll put that there. Yeah, because we'll the yeah. there's more things to fill. Oh, oh. What's this one? Doggy patisserie, cakes and bakes for your pampered pooch. I'm doing R. Do you see? I do R. I tell you, who really goes to that R dish on Star? She's really picky with food, and you get most times she'll go. Dog food again, really. She really likes nice, nice, nice. What's the other one of those ones? Does it turn? Yeah, it does. Does it? You should be telling you. It says cakes and bakes. Cakes and bakes. There's an ingredient list, and that's what she goes for. Free range eggs, flour. Honey, vegetable oh. oil. <gasps> for them, it's, it's desiccated coconut. Carob and white chocolate flavour coating. Oh. Oh. Yeah, she would. That, that's, and there's that's more. <gasps> I haven't finished yet. Bionic biotic concentrate, canine health support. Mm. Naturally aids skin, coat, condition, digestion, and immunity. So last an average of one month. Mm. So do I sprinkle that onto food or? Well, not now mix? because we're filming. But <laughs> I'll be back soon. That's for your dog, you not for you. Just so you know. <laughs> I quite like. 
Pretty skin and hair, yes. Um, <laughs> mix the recommended day amount with your dog's regular food. Oh, right. True. So that's nice and simple. You just... Mm-hmm. Ooh. There's one more thing in this box. Ooh. It's like Christmas morning. It is a bit, isn't it? Ooh. <laughs> Scruffy chops. <laughs> no. Save the best till last. We, we, as I say, we have a big shot, and you've seen it, and you, you, although she's delightful, you could call her a scruffy chops, couldn't you? Yes. Yes, because I, I, fact, I think I did. Person. Okay. Natural mineral shampoo for dogs. Oh, I like that. I like that mineral stuff. Very natural, 98%. You could have washed your hair with that yesterday, actually. No, I could have done. I might be able to get that. So, that, and how much was that, um, Right, so this is the oh, take the card out away from it. This is the pack that came. Okay, so you've got your health supplement, two lots of natural chews, biscuits, a toy, a dry shampoo, and the ever useful little mm. since you've got a name doggy, um, useful little key fob, mm. um, for poopy bags full of poopy tree. No, not for the poopy tree. Stop saying that. Um, so this pack in that rather nice box. Um, the you can start these monthly things from 16.95 a month so this box would come every month now every month it's a different selection mm. of things mm. um, and i've been having a look online and, and there is stuff online on the uh, pooch pack website that tells you a little bit about um, the previous pack so you've got an idea what might be coming everyone comes with one of these cards which gives you an individual description of the things in this particular pack Website links, information, QR codes, so you can have a look at the website. So this comes every time. So this is what you're actually paying for. Now, my dogs have tested all of these products mm. here. Um, they weren't too keen on receiving that from the water, but that's mm. just my dogs. I had to borrow a Labrador to get that back. <laughs> um, but that was fine. I'm a little cautious about dry powders because they can sometimes cause a problem. For dogs um but if you were an owner and you paid 17 pounds can be a little bit more than that because there's subscription versions that um that save you a bit of money um what would you think of that pack turning up for that price well i've been looking at the items and trying to sort of price them individually but that kind of thing can be easily seven or eight quid mm. in pet shop um, it's a very good quality well, you can't really yeah. see it oh, on yeah. camera but it is actually a very very good quality mm. toy yeah and so smells that, gorgeous. It, yeah. So that, I mean, that can be expensive. I would think that could be, I don't know, two or three. So, yeah, I don't think that's bad, actually. Mm. Is it something that would attract you on a monthly basis? It would depend how well it went down and what, what the different things were each month. I mean, that's not a bad mix, actually, mm. because... You know, I think they'd probably all go for that. I'd like to see the effect of that on them and whether I want to, you know, because we've got mm. an old dog, we've got one that's um, ruptured cruciate ligament. So, you know, I'd, I'd quite like to mm. see the effect it had on them. Um, so that, that would sway me. How, how well were the dogs receiving what was coming? I don't right. think that's bad financially. Mm. Um, and certainly I love that. That is... Um, I mean, the, the thing that's important to understand with the way that, that um, it's been set up is your standard plan is nineteen ninety five a month. That's monthly plan. So if you just get one off, it's £20. If you went for three monthly, the price comes down to eighteen ninety five. The cheapest one, the sixteen ninety five version, means and that you sign up for six months. Oh, six months. Well, you can six do months. just a month, but that's twenty pounds. Yeah, yeah. But the, to get that lower price, the lowest price is six, six monthly. Months. Yeah. 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 And there's, there's some examples. When you click on subscribe, um, there are some examples of what was in some of the other stuff, just to answer your question. That's actually the one See, that we've I, got. Well, would, is there any way? Do they, is it, does everybody get the same? Box? Yes. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. So because, must... because as a company, they must be signing up to these people to promote and get their goods and sell them uh, on. Right. And I, I must admit, I haven't seen um, some of these in the shops. I certainly haven't no, seen no, these no, in the shops. No, no. Right, this is uh, December's box I'm looking at. Um, and it gives you an idea of what was in that one. And you've got, it's always a kind of mixture of there's different treats. Um, there's a chew, there's actually one of the antler chews that we've tried oh, yeah, before yeah. and a decent toy. So it looks it's like, good stuff, it, it is very good quality stuff. I have to say, the stuff in here 
is very good quality stuff. My dogs ate those and one of the cats fought them for it. I haven't tried the powder yet and I haven't tried that because one of my shepherds is a little bit sensitive in the skin. We have tried that and mine were too bone idle to fetch it when it went a little bit too fast in the water and I had to get a... A, a Labrador oh, retriever to go and retrieve yeah. it, um, but it is—it's a very good toy. It's great quality. They've chewed it up a bit, they've bashed it, and yes, you can uh, put a few treats in it and do the usual bits and pieces with it. Um, these went down great guns. Um, oh. Virtually bit my fingers off for them, and and something practical, you know, easy thing to I take out with you with yeah. your poopy bags. Yeah. Um, so I think it's more a question of I've asked quite a few people because I did market research, um, which must involve me torturing the people that I know. Um, I asked them, you know, if I said to you, uh, twenty pounds is a one-off for this. The price was a little bit off-putting for a few for people. 20, yeah. yeah. Um, if I when I, I talked them through, well, what if I said it was? That's on the market trade now. Yeah, I'm, not no, I'm not asking twenty. No, I'm not asking twenty. I'm not asking twenty. Um, if it was sort of sixteen ninety-five, would they buy it? And they were a bit more inclined. Mm. Um, it is very good stuff. It's yeah. not cheap uh, tat. Um, I'm not entirely convinced by the pricing, but I do think it's good quality products. And I do quite like the idea, personally, of the, the lucky bag thing every month mm. when you don't quite know it's what you're going to get. Now, I have to say, having uh, my dogs like these so much, um, and they're lovely, lovely biscuits, they smell mm. gorgeous. Um, having had my dogs like these so much, if I saw these in the shop again and I wanted to go to the website, I would be tempted to buy them again, which is the point of all of yes. this. Yeah. The toy, I'm, I'm not... It's a great toy, I love it. But would it lead you to go to find more of that type? Um, I'd want a toy in this sort of a pack because I'd want various bits and pieces in it. So I, I, I do, I, I like the idea I, and I wish to tell you the best of luck with this. Mm. I do like the idea. I'm not entirely convinced by the price. Um, it beautifully packaged, it comes delivered properly. Um, delivery is very good. Um, I'm just iffy about whether it's a little bit expensive I, I must admit i would like to see some tailoring i mean we've got i say a mix of dogs but if i had all i don't know papillons or all great danes or mm. you know would i get a good enough mix for my dogs well, then um, you know but everything well, I mean, there sure for example that's a medium one so would a great i don't know you know would they destroy that? Well, my shepherds have been chewing it up, and yeah. I mean the usual dead sick because it's rubber, but um, but they haven't actually killed it. Although I haven't tried it with the husky cross yet, um, who might kill it? Um, but every everyone seems to be a similar setup. It's it's really a question of um, whether you would want to pay that sort of money. I do wish you the best of luck because it's a novel idea, and I think there's lots of people who do like the idea that they can get this random bag of stuff that they're not just going to see because this is not just stuff that's in your local shop. So I like the idea that you can test and find other products, go to the website and buy them. So I do hope that it works out. I, my only reservation is that it's possibly a little bit on the expensive yeah. side. But I do wish you the best of luck. Yeah, and, uh, it's great, sir. Now, it's after that very, very positive, wonderful look at shoes, Julie, oh, I think we're going to go sad. No, it's your favourite time, isn't it? Oh, I think it's been called away urgently, so... <laughs> Because it's Schmaltz Corner, which is not sad. It's meant to send people away with a smile on their face. Oh. They love it. They I wish I mentioned it. it before. Schmaltz Corner, everybody. Yay! Get your tissues. No. Get your flags and bunting, I don't know. Try it and say. <laughs> it's a happy one. It's always happy. Schmaltz Corner. You will. You will well, it is. Right up until the point that I speak, yes. <laughs> yes. And then I'm crying. Okay. This is five-year-old Jack, an Italian greyhound who's owned by Chip and Grace and DiMaggio, uh, and he won, basically, he's, he's Bob, his best of breed, he's Bob. Oh, these dogs no, Bob. No, Bob, Bob, Bob did yeah. he? Yeah. Uh, so he was the 2013 Westminster County Club Best Italian Greyhound in the show. He won that. Um, this is an American show, just to explain this to is people. American, yes. Westminster. We think he's in New York. I think he's in New York. Which must be central, just like that. Yeah, yes, I'm sure. So it's handy for everybody, I imagine. And it's just Westminster want... confuses people. They think it's a London show, but oh no, did I confuse people? Anything? I hate to. No, no, Westminster. Did by calling it Westminster in the first Westminster. place. Anyway, carry on because we're in the yeah. moment now. We're, yeah. Okay. Right. Now he's retiring, which is it was good because he's had his time. How old is he? Five. So, but, but I, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. He's going to have a long retirement. Happen, hopefully. Yeah, you're trying too he's... hard now. Get on with it. <laughs> He's retiring. He's an American Kennel Club certified therapy dog. 
Uh, and he goes around to schools and uh, nursing homes. Every Thursday in the school year, Jackie's the guest of honour at Mrs. Jodie Thomas's second grade class at Waterville Elementary School. Mm-hmm. And her special education students <laughs> read to Jack to build confidence. Um, he lives, what I like about this, this is a real, they're not sort of, they, they don't strike me as people that are showing and there's 26 dogs out the back that live in kennels. These dogs live in the house, they are pets who happen to be successful at showing. But you're assuming that, but anyway, come well, on. Because he lives with a 70 selling greyhound, an English bulldog and a great day. And he says it gets a little hectic round here. So they're in the house, Debbie Connolly. Allegedly. In the house. No, they're... Did you I go to their photo? House? No. No, exactly. I got a photo. Was that it? Is that that's, the, that's the end of the yes, story? That's... Seriously? I thought that was good. Where's the but cry it's... bit? No, no, there's no cry bit. There's smiley, smiley. He's had, he's had a great, he's been, well, I don't know if he's been campaigned, but he's had a great successful show career, and now he's going to retire, and he's going to make, he's just going to make people happy, which is what dogs do best. Is he that's making some bitches smart. happy here and there as well? I don't know, that's not mentioned. I don't think we should even um, speculate well, on that. I'm sorry, but that's, that's not... That, no, that's no my near emotion in for Schwartz they're, Corner. They're not going to turn around and say, oh, by the way, we won't be breathing him. But why would they even bring that? These are nice people. No, but you're missing the point. Like you. And where's nice the cry people. bit? I want the cry bit. I want it to be so sad and so emotional that I'm looking for my tissue. Well, what you've done, Debbie Connolly, is you've misunderstood Schmaltz Corner. Oh. It's not to make you cry. You probably should have mentioned this but a I year ago. I don't like to make people cry. Well, maybe you. If you've known me. But, in general, I like to send people away with a smile because you bring up some... What, what am I smiling stories. about with this one then? Where's he's the emotion a, in this story? He's had a lovely, lovely show career. I'm sorry to bore you with this again because you got this the first time. He's had a lovely show career, right? He's got a lovely... He's got a lovely family of people... I think we've just turned dogs. into Miranda, you know. <laughs> yes. Ooh, cheeky. <laughs> um... And he's going to go and make people happy. Oh, okay. Live in the That's very world. nice then. That's the thing to celebrate. He's Where was he living before? That lives in the real world. Where was he living before? Debbie Connolly World. Was <laughs> he? Oh, lucky devil. That's a great Schmott's corner. Okay. You just cross because you can't really drive a tractor through that one. Well, That's it's all. not even worth my effort. Sure, dog retires at five, gets petted by children. That's kind of it, really. That's beautiful. You just, you just, beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah, you know, like, you, you that's Grinch. quite pathetic. You Grinch, your heart is two sizes no, too small. Uh, can you do better next time? Because that's really quite disappointing. I want more tears. I want more sad. I want people injured. I want saving children, fires, that sort of thing. Okay. If you could get that for next time, You're I'd be very pig. pleased. It's still pig. I know, but that's not the point. <laughs> Well, I'm going to bring proceedings to a close I before you should. stomp on me anymore. See, with the video, I can't, I can't wear my hard hat to protect you from the stomping. That's the trouble. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you'd like to comment on anything you've heard, um, or if you'd like to send stories for us to discuss next time, for Debbie to stomp on or whatever, um, you can get in touch. I'm Julie at thedognewshow.com. I'm Debbie at thedognewshow.com. Do send us your press releases. We've had a couple this week. Thank you to National Pet Month for that. And any products for reviews, please send those to. Especially chocolate. Thank you and bye. <laughs>